Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you remember last week's SpaceX announcement, you saw this video simulating the return trajectory and landing maneuvers of the big Falcon stage. And I was fascinated by this because really what it's doing is none of these wings behaves like a wing. They all behave more like air brakes because the angle of attack into the wind is, or into the airflow is essentially stalled. So it's just dr changing the amount of drag. I mean, I'm sure there's some more subtleties to it than that, but pretty much, you know, you're just adjusting this to try and rotate it or uh, twist it, torque it in one direction or, or another. And anyway, I was fascinated by this. How was I going to be able to do this in Kerbal Space Program? Because the Kerbal Space Program, you know, physics engine, while it would support this, the control mapping doesn't support it. Now, it is kind of possible to abuse the parts available to you and get a pretty good approximation. This is a Tim Dodd everyday astronaut basically using uh, lots of Werner thrusters and uh, reaction wheels to try and get the control required. But I wanted to do this largely using aerodynamics, and that required a little different approach. In fact, I needed to use mods, which aren't even available in the current version. To get the wings to move the way that I wanted, I had to use Infernal Robotics, and well, Infernal Robotics still has quite a few bugs in it. This is the version 1.3 of Kerbal Space Program because that was the, the last version that I could get it to run on reliably. And when I say reliably, well, um, yeah, we still would have random unscheduled disassemblies. But even after you get it figured out, after you get it running reliably, you're then left with something that's very hard to control because, well, with Kerbal RPC, you can assign different parts, different controls to different uh, areas. Here, um, yeah, I've got these buttons here that let me move these so I can get them into the positions I need. And that's all well and good, except when you're trying to land it and make these things move very quickly in very precise ways. In that case, you end up in serious amounts of trouble. But to map these controls back to kind of more sensible, regular controls, you can use something called Kerbal RPC. I mean, there's various options, but what I've basically done is implement a limited fly-by wire system. It's really more like a control translation system. So what I've got is a script here that I have written called BFS and it reads in the positions of these and then it can react and when I hit various controls, these are the translation controls I map it to, it adjusts the angles. So if I run this, oh god I could run it, if I run this thing and hit F5, starts it up, so there's my thing. Now to map it, I press B to enable it. Okay, now let's press it again. Oh, come on. Enable it. Get into landing mode. There we go. Oh, no. It apparently does not want to be in landing mode. So the landing mode is supposed to be toggled by the brakes. There it is. Now it's stuck in landing mode. Um, so when you switch it into landing mode, that enables the control mapping. So. If I want to adjust my pitch, I'm pushing I and K. You see that? So I push I as if I want to pitch down and it moves these up and moves these down, therefore increasing the drag at the bottom and decreasing the drag at the top. Similarly, if I do the reverse, these ones can fold down and these ones fold up, letting me pitch backwards. So this is equivalent to bringing the nose up. Now to rotate, I'm just going to press H to push everything back into normal position. So to yaw, I have J and L mapped, so you see what it does is it just twists the design and then twists the configuration the opposite way, and in theory this lets me fly it. It's not actually very good. And there's also a an N key which puts it back to the neutral position for landing, and H puts it back to the standard position. So that's basically all the translation controls are mapped. There's one other feature that I added to this rocket to uh, help make it controllable and you can just see it hidden away inside it. This is my mass sled. This is something which was mentioned in a, well when they were talking about Red Dragon. 
This is basically a mass inside the spacecraft and you can adjust the center of mass of the rocket one way or another. It moves it slightly backwards and forwards and up and down. So this, I push this all the way forwards to add a bit of a keel, but even then it was hard to fly and so I kind of gave in and added these as well, these little air brakes. But with all that, was it flyable? Well, let's go and take a look. Okay, so I'm actually playing this whole section at four times regular speed, but you know, there is a little bit of torque that's applied. I'm still using SAS with a, a weak reaction wheel because I still had issues with roll, but what happens is that that big tail fin at the back, although Elon kept telling us it doesn't do anything, it's purely structural. Let me tell you, this thing, if it rolled left or right at all, the mass of that would cause it to torque around and then catch the airflow as it came out of the shade and then that would cause it to bounce back and forth. But yeah, I was able to get the thing through the atmosphere, keep get try to get the thing nose down because I thrown control surfaces on there like they were random pieces of candy to be honest but then we get it in the horizontal descent position in fact it's sl going slightly backwards you'll notice this is obviously not looking particularly good it's not to scale but it's, I'm just trying to get the aerodynamics right and then we uh, fold this out and start the reverse thrust and we're not using 100% thrust here because we're just using it in... We're using it for its thrust vectoring ability to just get me into a reverse cleanly. And we're folding out those. And now the hard part is I'm watching my suicide burn distance. And I want to make sure that never goes to zero. But it is still decreasing. Okay, because we don't want to crash into the ground. Oh, ah, uh, darn, overdid it, overdid it. Okay, now I gotta... Okay, we are just sitting here on a... Your rocket engine, basically. Just a controlled explosion, and, 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 excellent. Excellent, okay. So yeah, we were able to land it after, like, actually dozens and dozens of tries, because, of course, nothing ever works the first time.